Welcome back to another episode of Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I am Jason Bowman and I love cars. Uh, today's episode is going to be about the Jaguar XJS V12. When I was a kid, I had a Jaguar XJS Hot Wheels car. I remember seeing commercials for Barbie's Jaguar. My first real-world encounter with the Jag was seeing Mr. Curry's XJ6 in my grade 10 auto mechanics class. Mr. Curry was my teacher. We used to do small maintenance and repairs on it. I remember being fascinated by the inboard rear brakes in the car in general. Mr. Curry's class was kind of boring. We did a lot of textbook work and watched a lot of Betamax videos while he busied himself with the house he was building and the retirement he was planning. I had Mr. Austin in grade 11. He was a cool auto teacher. He was a real mechanic that had hurt his back, so he decided to become an auto mechanics teacher. He was a real car guy and muscle car enthusiast. That semester was unprecedented as Mr. Austin's enthusiasm for American V8s was so contagious. 28 of the 30 students built engines that year. Generally, as more like five students. He told me Mr. Curry's Jag was a piece of crap, and I believed him. Looking back, I don't think Mr. Austin hated Jag specifically. He just hated all foreign cars in general. He drove an absolutely mint-conditioned 1975 Corvette to high school. Local legends suggested Mr. Austin's Pro Street Vega and Dodge Demon were unbeatable back in the day. Jaguar XJSs were pretty common in my favorite B car movies and television shows growing up in the 80s and 90s. The XJS was codenamed XJ27 Project internally. The styling of the XJS was done by Malcolm Sayer. Sayer was an aircraft engineer during the war and later became involved with automotive aerodynamics. His most historical significant contribution was helping to develop and engineer the shape of the Jaguar E-Type. Sayer sadly died in 1970 prior to the XJS's completion. William Haynes, chief engineer and technical director along with the Jaguar design team, headed by Doug Thorpe, completed the project. The XJS was powered by a V12 engine with a choice of manual or automatic transmission. Manual transmissions were unfortunately a short-lived option as Jaguar was just using up surplus E-Type trannies. My research suggests only 325 four-speed V12 cars were built. Back in 1975, like today, a V12 was a pretty big deal. V12s usually being reserved to the likes of Italian exotics like Lamborghinis and Ferraris. XJS specifications compared favorably with both gorgeous Italian ladies. 0 to 60 in 7.6 seconds and it had a top speed of 143 miles per hour. Automatic transmission use was the Borg Warner Model 12. In 1977, the General Motors Turbo Hydromatic 400 transmissions were used. The TH400 bolts right to a 350 Chevy engine, making this swap almost cliché due to the simplicity of the swap. The 1993 to 1996 Jaguar XJS used a GM 4L80E transmission, again making LT1 and LS engine swaps extremely easy. The XJS originally rode on Dunlop SP Super E20570 VR15 tires on 6K alloy wheels. XJSs came in three iterations, Series 1, 1975-81, Series 2, 1981-91, Series 3, from 1991-1996. Series 2 cars came out in July of 1981. The XJS was renamed the XJS HE and was powered by a new high-efficiency V12 engine which increased its fuel efficiency by almost 50%. Along with the fuel efficiency gains, the fireball combustion chamber cylinder heads up the power to 295 horsepower and 263 horsepower in North America. The XJS HE also received minor changes to the exterior and interior. Body colored trunk trim in place of the standard previous black, new 5 spoke starfish alloy wheels, chrome inserts on the upper part of the bumpers, and burled elm inserts on the dashboard and door cards. Series 3, 1991 to 1996. The last generation of XJS came out in May 1991 under the new ownership of Ford. Job 1 at Ford was dropping the hyphen in XJS. Job 2 was the Jeff Lawson designed rear quarter windows. Job 3 was the V12 was enlarged to 6 liters in May 1992. Power is up to 304 horsepower. Job 4 was adding boring outboard rear brakes, replacing the more race car inboard brakes of previous models. Job 5 was a 6 liter V12, got a GM 4L80E with overdrive transmission, replacing the 3 speed turbo 400 transmission. Job 6, a 2 plus 2 convertible, was introduced. Job 7, XJS got more aerodynamic front and rear bumpers. Job 8, 
The gauge cluster switch from the super cool drum type auxiliary gauges to the lame conventional auxiliary gauges similar to the cluster in the XJ40. Job 9. In 1995, a special edition model was built to celebrate the 60th year of the Jaguar cars. Celebration cars featured wooden steering wheels, Jaguar embossed seats, and diamond turn wheels. Jaguar XJSs were built in Coventry, England. You cannot be bum! Cheeky monkey! 115,413 XJSs were sold over 20 years and 7 months. XJS marketing was immensely proud and very bold. Warning. A formidable creature is at large and roaming about. The Jaguar S-Type. It may well be the best handling car in the world. First observed in London. Next in Paris. The two most exciting engines in the world are the Jaguar V12 that powers our race car and the Jaguar V12 that powers the smooth and silent Jaguar XJS. Here is V12 power wrapped in soft leather. Engines. Series 1 V12s displace 5.3 liters. The design had an over-square bore stroke ratio with a 90mm bore and a 70mm stroke. The benefit of the over-square engine allows for more and larger valves in the cylinder head, higher possible RPM by reduced piston speed, and lower crankshaft stress because of lower peak piston acceleration. The 5.3 liter V12 made between 242 horsepower and 295 horsepower depending on emission controls and compression ratio, and up to 295 foot-pounds of torque in fuel-injected versions. In 1971, the V12 engine had Lucas Oscillating Pickup System electronic ignition. Initially, the Opus ignition amplifier was bolted to the engine between the cylinder heads. It had overheating issues. The ignition box was later moved away from the engine where it could get cool airflow to help cool it. The XJS had a Bosch D Jetronic fuel injection system adapted by Lucas for use on the V12. Series 2 V12 The Series 2 V12 was called the HE for high efficiency. It came out in 1981. Swiss racing driver Michael May designed a pair of high swirl cylinder heads. The design centered around a swirl chamber at the exhaust valve with a channel around the intake valve. The original dished pistons were tossed in favor of conventional flat top pistons, which allowed the compression stroke to push the air through the channel around the intake valve to the chamber below the exhaust valve, causing turbulent swirling flow around the relocated spark plugs. This design allowed for radically high compression ratios for the time between 10.5 to 1 and 12.5 to 1, depending on market and year, and allowed a leaner air fuel mixture which increased fuel economy without sacrificing power. Digital P fuel injection was added which featured a digital ECU with the integrated MAF sensor replacing the older analog ECM and remote pressure sensor from the Bosch's original D Jetronic. The Opus ignition was shelved in favor of Lucas's constant energy ignition. CEI in 1982. The new unit delivered spark more reliably. Laughably, when opened, the Lucas CEI module had a tried and true General Motors 4 pin HEI module inside of it. The CEI was replaced in mid 1989 by a Magneti Morelli unit. The Morelli ignition system was used until the end of XJS production. Series 3 engines. In May of 1992, the V12 engine was stroked to 78.5 millimeters, 3.09 inches, increasing the displacement to 6 liters. Horsepower rose to 302 horsepower at 5350 rpm and 347 foot pounds of torque at 2850 rpm. Suspension. Jaguar XJS Series 1 and 2 rear suspensions with inboard rear brakes were designed by William Haynes to minimize unsprung weight at the outboard ends. The Series 3 adopted conventional outboard rear brakes to simplify rear brake maintenance. Front suspension on the XJS used race bred double wishbone design. The XJS always wore aluminum wheels. Early cars used 15 inch wheels, while later cars progressed to using larger 16 inch wheels. Styling Very few exterior styling changes occurred over the 21 years of XJS production. The most notable changes happened in 1992. The rear quarter windows, taillights, were redesigned by Jeff Lawson. The car also received more aerodynamic front and rear bumpers. Interior. Like the exterior, the interior did not change a lot. Wood veneer changed from oak to elm. The biggest changes were the auxiliary gauges that changed from drum style to conventional dials in 1992. Performance. XJSs were quick off the mark from the factory as shown in this Motor Week clip. Or you noticed you're past the 60 mile per hour mark and that only took 8.4 seconds. The quarter mile is but another breath away. 16.4 seconds at a breathtaking 95 miles per hour. The aftermarket performance part support for the XJS V12 is very strong. Five-speed manual transmission conversions are also available. 
On the sacrilegious side of XGS performance, Chevy engine swap kits are readily available for converting 350 carbureted, tune port fuel injected, LT1, and even the LS. That XGS took that poor Camaro to Gabblebees. The XGS has a rich racing history in all forms of racing. From Targa Tasmania, to European Touring Car Championships, Hill Climbs, the Trans Am Series, and everything in between. XJSs were originally intended for luxurious grand touring and eating up the miles at speed. They do this very well. Wait, what was that? Holy crap! Yet another jackalope! Run. Buying a Jaguar XJS. Experts agree that the XJS has finally become collectible. The XJS has gotten a bad rap over the years. I think it is time to forgive the XJS. By 1975 standards, the XJS was an extremely modern, complicated machine. By 2021 standards, the XJS splits the difference between 70s simplicity and 90s technology. For my research, the biggest problem with these cars is they're difficult to diagnose problems with them. Unlike most 70s cars, they are not simple machines. Unlike most modern cars, you can't just plug them into a scan tool and pinpoint an issue. Most modern garages want to diagnose an issue quickly and move the car through their shop even quicker. XJSs require brain power and methodical diagnostic procedures. My advice is either to be an above average mechanically inclined person or find a good garage that specializes in 1975 to 1996 vintage Jaguars. The aftermarket has also come to the rescue with modern electronic control modules and ignition system upgrades. Many of them are indistinguishable from stock items to keep the cars period correct looking under the hood. Save for that, many XJSs have been converted to Chevy V8 power. Engine swap cars come up for sale often. This may be a good option for those that want an exotic look, silky smooth ride with something your average corner garage can fix and maintain. Experts agree a pre-purchase inspection is a necessity and complete service records would also be ideal. XJSs from 1970 to 1980 are prone to rust. Check door sills and floors. When it comes to outer panels, the bottom of each fender where it meets the sill is an infamously common rust spot. The fenders also often rust around the headlights and the wheel wells. Series 3 cars were galvanized in all the problem areas. Although the dreaded tin worm still enjoys eating around the windscreen header panel which is difficult and expensive to repair. Check for rust on the forward edge of the roof where it meets the stainless steel fastener. Mechanically, make sure everything works and pay special attention to the commonly neglected inboard rear brakes on the Series 1 and the Series 2. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I hope you enjoyed my story of the Jaguar XJS V12. Please remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when my next video comes out.